Hello, chapets! Now, I don't know if you know or not, but I lost my faith in cooperative games. They were either too random, have rules that really get on your nerves, or they have AP and APS. Analysis paralysis. And alpha player syndrome. Or felt a little lopsided in places. The only reason for me to have co-op games was to play solo. Wouldn't it be good to not play solo? But my faith has been restored! Hallelujah! With Apocalypse Chaos. Is it that way round? Maybe it's that way. In Apocalypse Chaos, you are... in a spaceship being attacked by bad guys. Seriously, that's the backstory there. So, how do you set all this up? You'll be building a 3D spaceship which looks like a warehouse. You'll place portals where the bad guys are spawned from. Choosing from one of the four characters that have no names, you construct a deck of cards which are the bad guys entering your ship and adjust the level of difficulty by adding one of the three levels of bosses to the deck. And then you're ready to play. Each round will play out like this. Bad guys will spawn at portals around your spaceship. Players roll dice and allocate them to their player cards. Each character has different statistics. Each has a special power and an initiative level. After you've decided what you're going to do with your results, that's when the team get together and brainstorm. This is where the game comes to a stop. As a team, you will look at the board, look at the bad guys, what they're doing, look at your results, look at the results of the other players, and then try and figure out what is the best way to get through this turn of the game. Will you need to change your initiative order to kill a monster before he kills you? Are some of the results of the dice useless to you but maybe benefit someone else? Should you activate the special power of the room that you are in? Or should you negate the result of your dice by removing one from the game or using your special equipment that you've picked up? Once everybody is happy, you push the play button and the game moves. You activate the heroes and villains in initiative order. They will punch each other if they're in the same room. They will shoot targets in rooms adjacent. They will move, they will defend, they will block, and they will take damage. When a player kills a baddie, they take their card. On the flip side is some equipment they've dropped. If a player has been killed, you only have two more rounds to kill all the bosses. And then you do another round. You spawn the monsters, you roll your dice, you plan and talk out your strategies, and then you activate everything. The heroes win if they kill all the bosses, because all the grunts will then run away! Or as I said, a hero dies, and then two rounds later, there's still bosses around, heroes lose the game. Or all the heroes just die. So summing up for Apocalypse Chaos, it is a board game that every Mr. Spock will love. Oh, that's not Mr. Spock, it's Wallace. Hmm. This game is a logic puzzle. Like a Sudoku. No, scrap that. Like a Sudoku in 3D. No, scrap that. Like a Sudoku in 3D with moving parts. The fact that the box cover says action and there's no minis in should be a suggestion to say that this game is not an action game. It's a team game where everyone contributes, much like on your lunch breaks when you're doing a crossword with your colleagues. The fact that the theme is so light means that you can adjust it to whatever you want it to be. Much like this game, the theme is thin, the characters have no names, but it's still a great experience and you can pretend that this game is this game. For me, the theme of Apocalypse Chaos is a bit meh, but I've rethemed this game as Assault on Precinct 13, the game. Because for me, the cards on the outside of the board say that they're outside the police station. It's a siege. Although technically in the game, they're inside the spaceship through the portals that they've come. The components and box are very good. The artwork is very nice. The gameplay is very simple and easy to understand, but the game itself will give you a headache. Playing the game solo, like I have in this video, it gives you an experience like sitting and doing a crossword on your own. The only downside of that is you're playing on your own, rolling one set of dice which you can't change with other players because there are no other players. But other than that, it still works like the full game. But it's in the cooperative mode that this game really shines. There is no time for one person to look at his dice, plan his moves, look at your dice, plan your moves, look at all the baddies outside the ship and plan their moves and what's going to happen and then tell you what to do. 
So there is no alpha gamer. <laughs> but you will spend a long time negotiating, talking, well, this guy's gonna move here and that guy's gonna do that and I'm gonna take damage if I stay there. So uh, does anyone want this dice? Oh, should we do this? Um, can we change that? This is what cooperative games should be. This is Castle Panic for Mr. Spock. It is I've never had so much fun negotiating, even in French. This game just, oh, so satisfying when you win and when you lose, you wanna do it again. There are seven different missions in the manual. Each has different objectives and objects like teleporters and barriers and things like that. And you can play these missions as a campaign. You can start with number one and then the equipment you carry over to level two and then you carry over to level three. Or you could play the game like I do and just play the tutorial mission over and over again. This game is easily my number one co-op game ever. And it slides just into the top three of the best solo experiences that I've played. But if there's something bad that I have to say about this game, it has to be the tokens. They are finicky. Every time you damage an enemy, you have to search out their number of their health points. Every time an enemy activates, you have to flip their life point token over to say that they have been activated. Yeah, it's a bit finicky. But apart from that, this is a really fantastic cooperation game where you're really communicating with the other players. You're not sitting on the sideline. So, if you're like Mr. Spock, you want to check this game out because it beats the pants out of 3D chess. And Panch Mimic. I want to reach out and touch the flame where the characters have no names. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.